Ah, the long-awaited chicken pot pie with bacon and cheddar biscuits. The first thing you need to do is start with cooked chicken. And what I did was I just cooked it in water. Basically, you bring water to a boil, put your chicken in, let it cook for 20, 30 minutes until it's cooked, and then pull it out. Make sure to reserve one and a half cups of that chicken broth. And I went ahead and I added a little bit of the better than bouillon chicken flavor to it and that helps make your sauce. Then you're gonna add your butter to a skillet and let it melt. Go ahead and add your flour in so that you can cook it out and you're making a roux. Then take that chicken broth that you just made and add that in. This is going to help thicken up your sauce. You also want to add one and a half cups of milk to this. I would do this rather slowly unless you just use a really tall pan because as you can see, ours tried to sizzle out just a little bit. Then you're going to flavor this with a little bit of Creole seasoning after you've cooked it for about five to six minutes and it's thickened. That's when you'll add, you'll kill the heat, add your Creole seasoning, and then set it off to the side until you're ready for it. Have you ever tried shredding chicken with a mixer? I highly recommend it. It's so easy. You just throw it in the bowl, either use your paddle or your dough hook. I've lost my dough hook for my metal bowl, so I have to use the paddle and just let it do its magic. Then you're gonna move on and you're going to, I just went ahead and reused the stock pot that I cooked my chicken in. You're gonna add some butter and then add onions. Now, <laughs> I didn't have any onions. All my onions went bad, so I started in on shallots and then half of my shallots were bad, so I don't have as much onion as it calls for. The other thing you wanna add to this mixture is sliced up mushrooms and cook those down. If you just add a small pinch of salt, that'll help bring the water out and help them brown a little bit faster. But don't season them. You're just trying to draw that moisture out. Now it's time to add your frozen, frozen cubed hash browns, your cooked chicken, your sauce, your parsley, and carrots and sweet peas. But we didn't have any and my daughter won't eat them anyway, so I left them out. Once you have all that added, go ahead and give it a good mix to stir it and combine it. And then you're going to pour it in a 9 by 13 dish that has been sprayed with oil or else butter just to help keep it from sticking when it bakes. Now I set this mixture off to the side so that I could work on the biscuits because I forgot you don't have to put the biscuits on the first time you bake it. You're going to bake it for 15 minutes before you ever add the biscuits. So go ahead and just throw it in the oven. Meanwhile, make the biscuits while it's in that first round of oven. The first thing you want to do is get a bowl and add two cups of self-rising flour and then you're going to add to that a half a cup of cubed cold butter and work that in until it is pea sized. You can use forks, you can use a knife, you can use a pastry blender, or you can use your fingers and play with your food because why not? To that butter and flour mixture, you're gonna add cooked bacon. My husband cooked it outside on the outdoor grill because we were kind of running out of room inside. And you also wanna add cheese and chives. It was one of those, I didn't have any dried chives and I started to cry, not really. And my husband was like, um, you have chives outside. So I went and stole some out of the garden. Anyway, chop those up, put those in. And then you also want to add in your heavy whipping cream and give that a really good mix until it kind of moistens that dough back out and then you're going to use your fingers and just bring it all together. Once you have that dough kind of brought together Go ahead and lightly flour your surface and then bring it out and actually knead that dough. 
the recipe says three to four times. Um, I had to do it a few more times than that to bring it all together, but it works really well on a very floured surface and just work with it and you'll get it where you want it. Then you're going to roll it with a rolling pin or else pat it out, pat it out, why not? <laughs> to three quarters of an inch thickness and then using a two and a half inch cookie cutter, it says to cut out 15 biscuits. Well, first off, I had a very hard time getting to the number 15. I finally got to 14, and then we just kind of fudged one for 15. But when it came down to it, my pan only had room for 12 biscuits. So use that as a judgment, and either make 15 and tear it up like I did and fill in the little holes, or make 12 and call it good, make them a little thicker. Now it's time to do the final bake. Put that puppy back in for 25 to 30 minutes or until the biscuits are done and you're good to go. Pull it out, top each biscuit with just a little pat of butter and I'm telling you this stuff is amazing. My family keeps saying don't lose this recipe, don't lose this recipe. It is that good. While it was family night, I went ahead and shared a little bit with my parents and my mother-in-law because they live very close. So we just ran it to them before we started our movie because first off, we didn't need all that. Although I have to tell you this stuff is amazing rewarmed. Like this is a recipe you don't want to lose. So keep that in mind. Now it's time for the dessert. This time we made pumpkin bread and chocolate banana bread, but I don't have a video of the chocolate banana bread. Here is the pumpkin bread, and I'm telling you, it is amazing. You wanna start off with two cups of flour. Just add them to a bowl. To that, you're gonna add all the rest of your dry ingredients, which is salt, baking soda, baking powder, ground cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Use a whisk to make sure all the dry ingredients are thoroughly combined and then you're ready to move on. Bring out your mixer and go ahead and add one and a half sticks or three quarters of a cup of softened butter. Now mine wasn't quite softened, so I cut it up in little chunks and kind of worked with it and it softened pretty quickly. To that, you're gonna add two cups of sugar and two large eggs. And then the secret ingredient, or the not so secret ingredient, because we're using pumpkin puree or pure pumpkin. And oh yeah, if you look up here, here's a video to the pumpkin that I made here recently. This is the why, reason why we made pumpkin bread. Why did we make the chocolate banana bread? Well, that's because I had bananas going bad and we needed to use them up too. Don't be afraid to go ahead and stop that mixer and scrape down your si the sides of your bowl. With this glass bowl, I definitely have to do that. And it's even better for this one to drop it down and get underneath that paddle because sometimes it doesn't get everything incorporated. It's just something I've learned using this particular mixer.
Now I had my mixer going a little faster. I had to slow it down to stir. It has a stir mode, which I assume is one. When you add that flour, you do not want to overwork the dough or it becomes tough. Now, one thing I have always done and had pretty good luck is right before I'm ready to call it quits, I turn it on for like 30 seconds pretty high just to make sure that it incorporates everything. Then use a spatula, like my cute spatula. Use a spatula and scrape off your paddle and then just go ahead and run it through there just to make sure that all that flour got incorporated. Now this makes enough for two loaf pans. I prepared them using the Baker's Joy Spray. Uh, go ahead and put half your batter in one, half your batter in the other. I really wanted to see how close I got by eyeballing it. So you'll see I pulled my scale out. Um, one was three quarters of an ounce more than the other. I thought that was doing pretty good. You're gonna put these in a preheated 325 degree oven for about 65 to 75 minutes until a toothpick inserted in comes out clean. And I'm telling you, these are amazing. Totally worth it. And we're off to watch Casper now. And no, that's not plastic sitting on a hot pan. This pan had cooled. This was later.